Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today is going to be pretty exciting because we've got the Volvo back in the garage for a bit more surgery. So obviously this has been at the yard at the office which you've seen. Um, we've gutted most of the car. There is no more wiring essentially in the car from here forwards. Everything's been removed. The air conditioning's gone, the heater blower's gone, the matrix is gone, all of that, all the dash is gone, all the clocks are gone. Absolutely everything has come out electrical wise from between the C and the B pillar forward. So that's all gone. So what I'm planning on doing is remove a few more things from the car. So I want to get all the suspension off the car. I want to get the subframe, front subframe off, the rear trailing arms off the rear. I want to give them a bit of a refurb. They've been on the car since I don't know how long. They're well overdue a bit of a service. Get new ball joints, get new bushes, get new links, things like that, just to tighten up the car suspension wise. The remainder of the exhaust, which is on the car at the moment, is coming off and going in the bin because I want to make a new exhaust system for this. Um, obviously along with the new engine, the new turbo, the new manifold. And there's a few other things that I want to do to the car, like put in some proper seat rails at the front to mount the driver's seat because it was basically on some modified runners. I don't know whether they were the original runners or I think they it might have actually been Evo 123, which Mitsubishi does share the chassis platform of the S40. And then once I've got everything off the car, I can then start putting things back on. So I best get this jacked up, get it on stand as high as possible. So then I can start stripping off all the suspension bits. Actually, there is one more thing. So guys, you might be thinking, why on earth have I cut the roof off? Now, if you do actually watch my videos and you can remember that far back, when I had the Donor S40 for the engine, um, I cut the roof off that as well. And I did say why I cut the roof off that one. Uh, and it's because I want to make a carbon roof skin for this. Now, I'm not going all the way on this. I'm not drilling out all the spot welds, just because I don't want to be taking the front and rear screens out. I've just left about 25 mil on the rear and on the front there, and a little bit on the sides to bond the new skin too. So I'm going to be skinning over the top of the other roof that I removed from the S40, because it doesn't have one of these, which was a sunroof. There is another reason why I wanted to remove the roof and it's because of the cage. Now the cage has been in here for quite a number of years and it's a cage that I designed myself. I got a company to bend the front legs and the uh, the main hoop and I got it fitted in the car. Well, I fitted it into the car probably 12 years ago, I don't know, something like that. 10 years ago at least. A couple of things, my abilities as a welder has improved significantly since then. Obviously I can TIG weld, I probably will still MIG weld this in, but I've got a better machine, and like I say, I'm better at doing it. And one of the main reasons why I want to replace part of the cage, I'm not replacing it all, because the main hoop is fine, the rear section is fine, it's just the front legs that I got bent. So if we have a look here, you can see there's a big old kink in there. The reason why there's a kink in there is because when I got the tube bent, I think that they put both bends in the same plane, whereas this is supposed to have an angle on it. You're supposed to rotate the tube and then bend it. 
they didn't do that they bent it on the same plane and then to get the angle they heated it up and kind of manhandled it and bent it that way which obviously is not right so at the time i recall i wasn't overly happy with it but i went with it anyway i wanted to get a cage in the car it was kind of all the tube that i had and it didn't look too bad i thought at the time and i got it in and fitted and welded and basically i've not been happy with it since the plan is to race this car i don't think it would go through scrutineering i wouldn't want to try and put it through scrutineering and even if it did pass scrutineering i wouldn't want to be racing on it because it's not safe if i do have an accident i want the cage to perform properly and i want it to basically save my life so hopefully i don't have to use the cage but there's a possibility that might happen. So I want the cage to be properly strong. And whilst I'm at it, the main hoop is 45 mil and my front legs are 38 mil. So I'm also gonna be increasing the diameter. So these are 45 like the main hoop and I've got some double door bars going in as well. So when I was looking at the cage, knew I wasn't happy with it, knew I needed to make changes to it. There's absolutely no chance now that I'd be able to weld the top of this without having access with the roof off. When I installed it, you could see I put some feet in the bottom there, which effectively lowered the cage. So I could weld the top of the cage and then basically jack it up, put it onto the feet and weld the feet in position. There's no chance that I would be cutting the rear section out just to lower it. It's a lot easier to put a big hole in the roof and make a carbon skin. So that's what I'm doing. No going back now. Now, one thing that I do want to address, which was lurking in the background of the previous video, is this. Now, at the time of filming this, I don't know if any of you have picked up on this because I haven't even edited that video yet, but you may notice that this wheel and tire is considerably wider than the other three. And the even keener eye of you will notice that it has got five studs. If you don't know about these cars, they're normally a four stud, four by one, one, four point three, like the S13 200 SX or the 240, whatever you call it out there. I have decided to change the PCD of the hubs so I can run the same wheels and tire combo as I am on the S4. So this is actually a five by one, one, two. I'm not going to cover this just now, but there will be a video on it how I have done these rear hubs, which is quite interesting actually, and also the front hubs, of course. I'm planning on running much wider wheels and tires as I have done in the past, just because with the power that this car is hopefully going to make, the narrower tires just won't be able to keep up. I will overheat them very, very quickly in a race situation. So that's why I want to get more rubber under these arches. And to be fair, they won't be going under these arches. I'm gonna to have to tub these arches just to be able to take the larger wheels and tires, uh, and I'll probably be doing an overarch or something along those lines. Not too sure what I'm gonna do on the front because I've not converted the hub on the front yet, so I don't know how far that's going to stick out. I might just be able to fettle with the original arch because they are quite large already. Another reason why I want to run the same wheels and tires on this car as I do the S4 is basically because I've got four sets of wheels for the S4 already. I've got three sets of wheels, three sets of wheels for this car. I'm just overrun with wheels and tires. So if I can run the same wheels and tires on both cars, that means I can get rid of everything that I've got for the S40. So they'll be up for sale and I can save a bit of space and save on consumables. Plan is to run the same wheels and tires on both cars same turbo on both cars, same engine management on both cars, and probably the same dash setup on both cars. I've not decided on that yet. It's quite expensive, but hey, I'm pretty balls deep already in this, so fuck it if one day both cars are running at the same time. I know I'm not too sure that will ever happen, but yeah. It just makes life a little bit easier. Anyway, I can crack on. So brakes, I've got four pot brakes on the front. I am happy with them. They do perform pretty well, actually. Um, but I did mention that I was keeping the ABS pump just in case I wanted to reinstate ABS later down line. Well, 
I've decided I'm going away from that. ABS pump is coming out. I've decided I don't want it in there. Chance of me trying to reinstate it is next to nil. Um, it's absolutely not happening. So ABS is coming out, making all new brake lines for it. Going to fit a uh, prop valve so I can adjust the bias to the rear. Um, and first things first is drain all the fluid out. So that's what we're gonna do now. So, flapjacks, brownies, mini rolls. So what I'm showing you here, other than I do like cake, that's true, is that I am draining out all of the brake fluid and I'm not gonna start undoing any of the pipe work. I've got the, the lid off here. So all of those banjos are at the lowest part of the car. So with them down there and that part there, it should completely siphon the system out. So there should be nothing left in the pipes once they stop dripping. So that's the theory anyway. It just means that when I start removing the brake lines, I'm not gonna get brake fluid everywhere. So I'm just gonna leave the car as it is until they all stop dripping and that should be completely drained. Let's go find some cake. Right, so it's day two in the garage and the brakes have finally stopped dripping. Um, and I've pressed on the brake pedal a couple of times and all it is is air in the system. So now I can remove the brake lines, I can remove the ABS pump. And at the same time, I'm gonna be removing the front subframe and the front suspension components and I'm gonna remove the rear suspension components too. And then whilst I'm in the swing of removing stuff from the car and tearing big chunks like that out, I'm going to attack the front portion of the cage. Anyway, crack on I suppose. All right, well, I've been trying to get the rear suspension off uh, and I've been struggling. Um, I'll be honest, this is two weeks after the last video clip that you saw, I've actually been on holiday. So I started stripping this down, got to a point where I couldn't get some of these bolts out. So this bolt here in the back of the trailing arm, uh, this one here to the control arm and the same bolt on the corresponding side here I just can't get out so what's happened I expect is the bolt has fused itself to the inner metal sleeve on the bushing and I've tried soaking it in WD-40 overnight for a few days I've tried heat I've just tried beating it and they are not coming out for love nor money so I've got myself the uh, the reset and I'm going to cut them out but I'm working on my back here the car is on axle stands I just can't really get in there with this. I'm gonna to have to find another way of lifting the car. Bear with me a second. So yeah, I've got myself a scissor lift and I've got my wife to thank for it really. Um, she came in, I was struggling with the rear. I couldn't get those bolts out. She came in and said, why don't I get a lift? I didn't need her to say it twice. And within 13 hours, I had a scissor lift. It just so happens that this one was for sale. It was on eBay and it was virtually in the same postcode. So it was just down the road. So I went over there in the morning, had a look at it. it looked all right. It worked and uh, I got it here that afternoon. So as you can see, this is going to be a bit of a game changer. I mean, I've wanted one of these for years and years and never really justified the cost of it. Like I said, this one came up on eBay. It was a relatively good price. The ones that normally come up on eBay are usually a million miles away. 
So uh, being at the end of the road was quite handy. It's not the cleanest, but uh, it does the job. And as you can see, I can get underneath the car quite comfortably. There's quite a lot of space between the platforms and in future I will be cutting a hole in the ground to sink this down so it's completely flush with the floor. So uh, yeah, low cars, no issues. This is as high as it will lift the car. It's uh, got a one meter lift. Um, I couldn't get any more than this in the garage anyway. I'm virtually touching the top because this is as high as it goes and it does fit. It means that I don't accidentally send the car up through the roof, which is uh, pretty handy. Anyway, now that I've got this, now I've got the space, I'm gonna get these bolts cut and get these arms out because this has been doing my head in. So there we go, the rear trailing arms and control arms are off and that took longer than I care to admit. It's been pretty much a full day project just to get four bolts out and what a nightmare they've been but managed to get them out without cutting the arms off. I was very close, I almost got really frustrated, just cut through them and tried to find some new ones but um, looking on eBay, not many of those about. So uh, persevered, got them off, so going to be pressing the bushes out and sending them off for blasting and powder coating. Same with the front subframe and anti-roll bars. So I've mentioned before that I've got some new seat rails to fit and they're going in place of the standard bracket. So all of the spot welds have to be drilled off this, removed, and I do have some new thicker FIA compliant side mounts to fit. My original ones were two and a half mil, so didn't meet the standards for the FIA and racing. So. Uh, got these ones to go in so best crack on eh The original seat brackets out didn't take too long actually the spot weld drill bit did uh, quite a good job of that it's actually not really a drill bit it's more of a, a hole saw if you look at that for using that type than the normal spot weld drill because you're more likely to go through the parent material with one of those drill bits it is possible because as you can see there I did get a little bit overzealous and uh, went through the hole there these are pretty good grab them on Amazon maybe I'll set up an affiliate link so you can uh, grab those yourself okay so that's another job done one more ticked off the list now last thing to remove I think is the ABS pump and all of the brake lines so that's the next job hang on I just had a thought why am I undoing these they're all going in the bin Tell you what, having this ramp makes jobs like this an absolute dream. I mean, yes, sat on this seat here, I could do with it being a little bit higher in comparison to rolling around on the floor. I'd take this any day. So there we go, all of the hydraulic brake lines are now off the car and in the bin. Now in a future episode, I'm going to be refitting some new brake lines, bias valve and things like that. So if you want to learn how to do that, make sure you are subscribing to the channel because that will be coming up in the next few weeks. So we are almost done with removing pretty much everything from the car. There's one more job and it's a job that I've been putting off because I hate this and it is removing this sound deadening. So removing sound deadening 
it's a pretty hateful job because it's absolutely everywhere, especially on a Volvo because it's not really designed to be a lightweight track car like a, I know a Clio 172. Now there are generally two ways this is removed. One way, which I'm doing, is with a scraper and a heat gun. The other way, slightly more expensive, dry ice, basically freeze this stuff and tap it with a hammer and it comes off in big sheets. Um, I was going to do that, I'll be honest, I probably wish that I was doing that because it's 30 degrees outside at the minute and being in here with a hot air gun is not my idea of fun but it's what I have. I don't have a big bucket of dry ice that I can dump in here right now. Like I say it's fairly expensive. I did look it's about 50 quid for about 10 kilos of it uh, and I think 10 kilos would probably do the car quite comfortably but I'd still need to get the hot air gun out because there are vertical sections uh, this is on like the bulkhead just behind the camera there and on the rear tubs as well so yeah um i'm going to crack on with this i'm probably not going to film it because it is very very boring i'll be keeping all of this and i'll probably stick on some scales and see how much it weighs right wish me luck so that is the driver's side done and a little bit of the tunnel it's come up quite well but that's taken absolutely ages this stuff is six and a half mil thick in some places and where we have seam sealer randomly on the panels it really sticks and uh, it's taken quite a while to get that all cleaned up um, this rag here is soaked in white spirit to get all the residue off i've got this side to do the back there there's some in the boot as well and i don't know how but I've got to get all of that off as well. In between doing that as well, because uh, I got quite bored of that, I've taken the rails off the passenger side too. I've also taken the doors off, um, just because they were kind of in the way and I've got to take them off anyway to strip the insides out, make them a bit lighter. I have weighed one of these doors before um, on my old car. It does have electric windows in there, so that all the motor and wiring is all still in there. All of the side impact protection is still in there. And I can't remember how much they weighed, but I think they were probably close to 40 kilos each. The rears were a little bit lighter because they did have polycarbonate in them, but still quite heavy, still got the door protection, still got the inner skin and all of that. No door cards on the rear though. Uh, although in one of the doors, I did find a hammer. So I don't know when that was in there. I mean, I have owned this car twice, so it's possibly been in there, whew, I don't know, eight, nine years, because it, i'll be honest i think it was my hammer <laughs> so that's been in there a long time so uh yeah i'm gonna get back to this and hopefully when i rejoin you this will all be done <laughs> Right guys, so I am going to end the video there. I appreciate we have done quite a bit in this episode, but not really that exciting. It's just been taking stuff off. So I've got the brake lines off. I've got the suspension off on the rear and on the front, including the subframe. I've taken the doors off. I've started stripping out all of the sound deadening, I've taken off the ABS. I've taken the front section of the cage out and I've taken the roof off. So, wow, yeah, we have done quite a lot in this episode um maybe it was a bit more exciting than i thought we'll see we'll see how the edit turns out anyway thanks for watching guys i hope you've enjoyed it if you have liked the video please hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you've got any questions please drop them in the comments below and i'll see you guys next time <coughs>